you apply for the job from Craigslist and then you work for Warner Bros. Discovery. What is sports producer? All numbers and it's traveling through space. I mean, do you watch the news? No. Call in because they're really mad that Law and Order is not on. And you're like, oh, turn on channel nine, turn on channel five. They're not airing it. Let's go. Send the chopper out. If you're in a position where you're dealing with that trauma after leaving, don't beat yourself up over it. Give yourself some grace. Because I did. I was like, afterwards, I was like, why did I stay in such a toxic place for so long? Take yourself serious and put yourself first, literally. There's a lot of things I could have avoided, a lot of pain if I would have done that. All right, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome back to Be Frank Podcast, episode 34. Today we have a guest, knows a lot about sports, and then she's a fitness uh, instructor, also a sports producer, and an awesome mom. And then I can't wait to talk about a lot of things about behind the news and the sports producing side of things, fitness training side of things, maybe learn how to hit on girls at the gym maybe. And then also, uh, you know, being a mom and then she had a post about going to a viral about these uh, social media posts. So we want to cover a lot of different things. And I never met her, but she seems awesome. Welcome to the show, Rachel thank you. Fry. I'm excited to be here. S uh, thank you for coming. So uh, let's just talk about like, a, let me ask you like who you are. And then I like to ask the question, like if you have a website built today, um, what your website will say as a bio? If, if I were to have, have a yeah, website, yeah. Well, it would say as a bio, um, it would probably say mm, consist consistency will get you results. Got you. I mean, a bio, I guess I could sit here and explain myself, but. I mean, bio you, could be like, you can like really say like, you know, you're born here, you do this, you do that, you do that. You know what I mean? Okay, so I'm from Oklahoma, but I moved away um, after high school and I went out and kind of like experienced life and all of that. Um, I went to film school, the New York Film Academy, but in L.A. Um, and then New York Film Academy in L.A. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So it originated in New York. Got gotcha. you. But it became like such a good film school that they franchised it. To L.A. Yeah. That and Miami sense. and London and a few other cities, major cities. Cool. So I went there. Um, I feel like I'm getting off topic. Of oh, the bio. no worries. Uh, I'm 27. Single mom. I have two little boys. And um, yeah, I just... So let's let's talk about you do a sports producer stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So what is sports producer? I can it has a lot of things with the title. Producer means a lot of things. But um so I'm on like the sports production streaming side, uh just because streaming is our go to now. Nobody really has cable or turns that on. They have like Netflix, Hulu, yeah. HBO Max, all of those. So um what I do is um, I'm in charge of the live sporting event that's going on. Uh, you could take Super Bowl, March Madness. That's one of our major um, events that we do, actually. And so everything that is going on there in the uh, production truck or at the live event, we're in charge of successfully streaming that to the end user. So like... Hmm. TBS, TNT, NBC, ESPN, all of those apps that would stream March Madness games. The only reason or way somebody at home is able to turn that on and watch it and have a clear image and it be successful is what we're doing behind the scenes. So what do you exactly do? Like, um, I guess you use a program and then like a make sure every coding or like is that computer programming job or what? Uh, there's a lot of like technical engineer side to the job we do have a set of engineers who can obviously go in and like fix things that are broken mm -hmm. like with the encoder or software 
or they can decode and recode. So pretty much we're receiving the source Mm -hmm. and it's all numbers and it's traveling through space. Okay. It's really, it's really crazy, but it's all done through softwares. And so what's your day to day look like? Like, uh, okay. You sit on the computer. Like, do you work at the studio or do you work at home? So it's remote now. Oh, got you. Yeah. COVID made it remote. And so we just need our laptop. Really? Yeah. How did you get into it? So I always loved sports and wanted to work in sports. And I remember I saw, I was living in Vegas and I saw the job was hiring and I thought it was too good to be true. Like, honestly, I thought it was a scam. Was that like LinkedIn or even like Craigslist? Craigslist. No, it (laughs) was Craigslist. It really was. And so I was like, no, you know what? I'm going to apply for this. And so I did. And I got an interview. Mm. And I remember being like in Vegas, in from Vegas, Craigslist. yes, from Craigslist You're brave. In Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was just kind of like, all right, we're doing this. Yeah. Um, I got the interview and I thought like at first when I was driving to the place, I was like, oh, this might be sketchy. Like, I don't know. Yeah. What's that know. say? Like a sports producer want it? Like a yeah. uh, like a money sign, money <laughs> sign, money sign. <laughs> Make tons of cash. No. Um, so yeah, I just I applied, got the interview, and I got a call back. I think two days later, and they hired me. So they actually initially hired me to do March Madness because mm. they needed help. Yeah. And so then COVID hit, mm. and when COVID hit, they brought me on full time. Mm. And I wasn't expecting that. So it kind of is what started my career. Got you. Yeah, because I was always doing gigs and odd jobs until I landed that. So whenever you got that job and then like they just teach you how to do things. Yeah. And then like, oh, is is that like, so it seems like that's like um, streaming all the like a computer work, but do you still feel like you're contributing to sports community? I do just because like we work with major clients, you know, we would have to be on the phone with like NBC, Spark Sport, which probably not a lot of people here in America know, but that's New Zealand's major sports broadcasting platform. And so we would have to work with their clients. um, And it was rewarding because we also did like, we did the um, Tokyo Olympics. Mm. Uh, we did, we, we've done the Super Bowls, um, March Madness, FIFA. So we do these major events and things that like millions and millions of people tune in to watch from all around the world. And yeah. like, it's really cool to be a part of that. So can you can like mess it up. We You can't mess it up because <laughs> if you mess you- it up, I have made one. Well, actually not one. I've made a few little technical technical issues. difficulties yeah but we have a process to troubleshoot okay so whenever live pro uh streaming happening right mm-hmm. is that actually live? It's live oh it's live like is there like a one or three seconds delay because there is the, a delay there uh, is? yeah there actually is um and it depends on who you're working with huh. so like you kind of get used to that the more you do it. Like, for example, can you share or? Yeah, for example, um, Spark, uh, say it's Premier League soccer. Um, there would always be like a three second delay from the live footage that's coming from like the actual production to us. And then there would be probably a six second delay from us to the consumer. The consumer. Huh. Why so is like that? we were able, it's just uh due to it traveling. Or yeah, because it's all like being encoded, decoded through space to make it available. Yeah. And so um yeah, it's pretty pretty crazy. Huh. So if something goes wrong with the source, then 
it could ruin. So, do the you entire- have a power to like a change the chant, like a major channel streaming? To like a, this yeah, podcast, like when you're behind it, like <laughs> I would have the power to completely change ruin it, it for really? you watching the Super Bowl. Damn, I could throw in a slate because you see, like the slates yeah. will be right back. Yeah. Commercial break in progress, stuff like that. Like that's what we're doing. Also, mm. we're in control of all of that. Is it like sometimes like you do it because like some like major mistake happens? Like oh, I gotta push this button so like nobody see this. Yes. You do? Yeah. <laughs> so like if you've ever seen like um, macro blocking. What's that? Uh, it's like when the content becomes, it almost looks like little blocks everywhere. Like. Like we. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Like we, yes. Uh, whenever you see that, like if we can't, if it doesn't go away and it continues, then we have to kind of um, act act right then and there and be like, okay, let's throw in a slate because a slate looks better than somebody sitting there and seeing their game like in little pixels, Yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, But in those times, like luckily I don't think we've had anything too major happening during like the Super Bowl or (laughs) it's some, Insect going on around, but sorry, but like it's crazy because you apply for the job from Craigslist and then you work for Warner Brothers. Warner Bros. Discovery. Discovery yeah. is that Warner Brothers and the Discovery is that merged? Yes. Okay. Yeah, they just did a merger this past year. Oh. It was all over. So your check said Warner Brothers Disney. Warner, so now I'm technically working for Warner Bros. Discovery. Oh, gotcha. Before it was Warner Media. So iStream Planet was a subsidiary. It's mm. like the baby company of Warner Media. Warner Media was absorbed by this merger. So they mm. pretty much bought out iStream Planet to take over. Got you. If that makes sense. How much does a sports producer make? It depends on your status, but... What, you, what's a status? Well, I mean, you could start out doing something minor. Right. And then become more of the... Like a more responsible... Yeah, because that's how I started off in a smaller role and then worked my way to a management role. Yeah. So you, I started at... When I got the job at... 25 an hour and then that's turned into it's almost 40 an hour that's awesome yeah it's pretty good it's a good jump and with this merger there are things coming in play that we're kind of like going to be new to uh because it's going to be ran by through a completely different system software and things like that so we're gonna have to learn there way versus our way but they are also um absorbing our software which is nice because our uh streaming software that we use was built by our team mm. and That's it's, awesome. yeah it's pretty crazy so but you got you had like because we were talking about you had a, a news background news history so that's probably helped to get the Sports producing. So it was the opposite. Oh, it was the opposite. Yeah. So it was, I was in sports and we were told when the merger happened, like it was going to be so good. And then we were told like, um, they're pretty much going to let us go. Mm -hmm. And so that's what made me be like, okay, I'm going to try to find a different job Mm -hmm. and make that shift. Mm -hmm. And I did some stuff for the OSSAA out here and things like that. But as far as like a full-time job, I applied at Channel 4 News. Mm. And then that's what I got. It was not my, it was not for me. Like at all. So I went from doing something very exciting that I loved sports to Mm. being submerged into a very like negative I mean, do you watch the news? No. Yeah. Why do you <laughs> why why do you not watch the news? Uh, I do think that it's all negative. Yeah. Uh, it's just uh, 
also like I do think that um it's very um persuasive. I think that constitution states like freedom of speech, freedom of press, all that kind of stuff. Uh it just like it's society too, it's just like extremely right or extremely left. And then it was like I was going to um I was uh, I was taking an MBA class and then there was a ethic class and then they told me like watch a news during a presidential campaign and then flip through every different channels and see what they're saying. Mm-hmm. And then I saw Fox News, I watch CNN, CBS, they saying exact opposite things. Mm-hmm. And then so this will I will never forget this uh, professor told me uh society and the news were talking describing a sky. So he say, "Can you imagine the sky, the blue sky?" Like the extremely right people will say there is no cloud in the sky. It's mm-hmm. totally completely blue. And the extremely left people will say there is a clouds everywhere. And then truth might be there's a little bit of cloud and a little the beautiful blue sky. So they, they both might be right, but they both giving you a wrong impression mm-hmm. of actual truth. Mm-hmm. So that that's the reason that I don't really watch the news, but I do follow the current event, try to read or try to educate myself, but not as much as uh, I can give my, give people opinion or like not necessarily, I don't want, I don't even want to do it. And like going to Facebook and say, Hey, you're wrong. You're stupid or whatever. I don't never do that. Also, I'm not educated enough to do that. And then um, I'm just ethically speaking, I do run the advertising company. So I don't, I don't, I have to know certain things, but I do not have uh, too much opinion about it. But that's, I don't know, that's a long story short. I don't watch the news. No, right. (laughs) And so imagine, like, you don't watch it because it's negative. But imagine being submerged into that environment all day. You're writing about it, talking about it constantly. Yeah. You know, like you're literally living that now. You're not just turning it on for your five minutes of the day. Yeah. And maybe getting irritated a little bit, feeling depressed or whatever emotion you get from watching the news. Right. And then you shut it off. Yeah. Right. But like, I, like I've worked. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say. Can you turn off the AC? Yeah. I've worked like really hard to get to such a good, like positive, mindful place. Yeah. So when I was in that environment, like, I guess I didn't realize how it would impact me in such a negative way because it literally is who has the worst story. Really? Yeah. Like there would be two meetings held a day. And it would be everyone involved in the newsroom in that room. And you'd pretty much go around the table and give your story. And it So you are doing that giving story? As a producer, you're also responsible because you're filling in a segment. So there's a four o'clock news, a four thirty news, a five thirty, and each um Each broadcast, a four o'clock broadcast, is filled with multiple segments. Yeah. And if there is a gap that needs to be filled, then that's on you. So as a producer, how do you find the stories? You kind of act a little bit almost as a reporter and an editor and a writer. So like you do everything. Like what's everything? Um, you're so you're working with the reporters nonstop because their story like so they reporter finds the story how they find the story that's they are involved kind of in that journalism world out here so they're they're putting themselves out there and i respect them because they i've 
So they have people, people around live. there, like the paparazzi kind of people. I'm, give them a scoop. Yeah, they have people in their corner, right? Right, who will literally send them stuff, reach out to them, or they're in groups. Yeah, they have ways. Yeah, um, of finding out what they do. Yeah, and it's because they are like putting themselves out there. Yeah, and you'd be surprised with how many people like call in to the newsroom. Really? Oh yeah. Because part of our responsibility was also like you listen to that phone lis- call. Listening. What's that? What's a, like an interesting phone call you got? <laughs> Many interesting things. Um, a funny thing is you'd be surprised how many. <laughs> Elderly people call in because they're really mad that Law and Order is not on, and oh. we're <laughs> we're like airing uh, breaking news, oh. something tragic that's happening, yeah, and it's covering their Law and Order episode, <laughs> <laughs> and it's our responsibility <laughs> to sit here and calm this person down. Really? Yeah. What and I was like, just like, Did you ever get a, like, sign a up for this? Did you ever get like actual scoop? So they're calling, say, hey, they're like robbing the bank right now. There so, was, um, what was that? Inside Scoop, I mean, yeah, people would call in all the time and be like, hey, there's a huge fire happening here. And you're like, oh, turn on channel nine, turn on channel five. They're not airing it. Let's go. Send the chopper out. You're also responsible for sending the chopper out mm. and reporters out. So, like, if something happens or is going down, like, it's your call to be like, let's respond to this. Let's go. And you're, it's crazy. Like, I guess I didn't realize how, I won't say desensitized, because I think everyone has their own way probably of balancing out their work life, personal life. Mm -hmm. But I will say, in general, general, generally speaking, people are, now it's coming from me, <laughs> people are like numb to what goes on. Really? Um, numb. So like what was like, uh, so you it was like a very taxing environment to work for, I guess. Yeah, I would literally get migraines. Really? Yeah, I had like my first, I don't know if we want to, bring it up but like the the major incident that happened previously where like the seven bodies were found or and everything I, that was like my big moment i guess where i had to deal with something very awful but you I have don't know anything about it yeah so it started out as an amber alert of two teenage girls who were missing oh that's how we started our morning and we're not thinking it's going to develop into what it developed into. And it's still an ongoing investigation, but it turned out to be like seven bodies, including the two girls were found out in Henrietta. It was awful, brutal. Yeah. And literally I had to talk about it and write about it just be constantly reminded of that, like all day for it. I mean, it was still going on after like two weeks. Mm. And so I was just kind of like, um, I had an epiphany moment. I was just like, I don't want to do this. Like, I don't want to become like so involved in that Mm -hmm. to where it's like my day to day. Yeah. Um, I think it's important that like people are made aware yeah. of the brutalities in the world. Yeah. But I just could not, I guess, find that place in my mind to accept that yeah. environment for my life. I guess it takes so many, it takes like certain different personality, I guess. It to- does. And I just saw too many of what I didn't want to become. Like what? Um, Like being almost like you get adrenaline when something goes bad. It kicks in and it's exciting. Oh, because like you have like a, 
some people are missing or whatever, then like, oh, this is going to be a good news. This is going to be my break. So you were ca- catching yourself becoming or, yeah, not on the even, dark side, I guess. Yeah, or just like I was observing so much there. Like then I saw someone who was just so numb to it. It was just another day in the office. You know, like yeah. I, you hear a lot of things there. And then there's people who joke about stuff that I just – didn't find very funny. Yeah. Um, like dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Those are actually funny. <laughs> but anyway, it was just not for me. Yeah. So you left. I did leave. So like, what was that kind of conversation was like? Just like, hey, peace out. Um. Yeah, I was just pretty much let them know like this wasn't going to be a good fit. Yeah. For me. Um, Does a news producer make good money? Not as good as a sports producer. Okay. I mean, seems <laughs> and you'd like, be surprised too. Yeah. Like the that industry's literally cutthroat. Hmm. Reporters, all of that. Is that yeah? I mean, like, uh, it's like, um, I don't know. Is that harder to become a news a caster than like athlete? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know, because it's such a completely different, like, approach. Is that but politics? I heard, like... It is, I feel like, with... There's politics and everything, but with the news industry, it very much is political. Yeah. Like, lobbying stuff, like, yeah. money involved. Yeah, it's just, like, literally, who has the best story? Yeah. You know? It's... So, like, do you, like... Um, boss or like your director i guess will like tell you to rewrite it to make it yeah you always have to have a second pair of eyes go over your work yeah what if like you don't agree with the day revision um it's talked about because it's always so the two o'clock meeting that would be held every day Mm -hmm. it goes over everything that's going to go into the evening shows yeah so it's like um the four o'clock four thirty five five thirty that's considered the evening but you're working the day shift for the evening mm. broadcast is that long hours too working? it's so yeah it was ridiculous that uh so you left and then what do you do now so now I've. I'm sorry. It's just like fine. this is going cra- to make me crazy. We should. It's because it's in the light. It's like a spotlight. Did I catch it? Yes, I think I have a hand of Jackie, yeah, Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee. But whatever. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. What do you do now? Um. So I reached out to my former boss. Yeah. And I was like, "Hey, any chance you guys want to take, <laughs> take me, back? me back? Yeah. Because we're all so close. Yeah." He's like, actually, yeah, things have taken a change for the better. Well, congrats. So that worked out. Yeah, perfect. Um, And then I was working while I was there. I was like, I want to start like building my own brand, my own company, you know. And so I. The fitness stuff. Yes. With fitness and health. Yes. Sorry. (laughs) Because I've just created such a passion for that and become kind of obsessed with it. Yeah. And I want to help people get there too, because my journey was a, sh- a journey. All right. Let's talk about that journey. That journey. It's been an ongoing journey, but I've finally kind of got to that point where like I'm doing it. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah, no longer it. like that struggle part. Like it's just ha- habitual. So uh, what was going on? I was in a really bad, like, relationship while trying to raise two little kids and dealing with somebody who was like not stable mentally or physically just in all aspects so it was like I was constantly having to carry the burden and the um trauma even from somebody else while like health like healthily raising two little kids Mm -hmm. and trying to make sure I'm okay. Yeah. It was just, it never 
was okay. Like it made me insane. So what um what got you out is do you saying the health and fitness got you out of that? I literally yeah turned all of that like trauma that I was carrying from that abuse and toxicness and just turned it into like I guess I put my pain and suffering and created something positive out of it. Mm. You know, and like once I really got in the gym and like it changed my mental, like my mindset and how I approach everything in life now. Mm. You know, like I just feel like that's what fitness can really do once you like really work on your physique, your mental changes as well. Mm -hmm. And that's I think what I've become obsessed with. So did you um I guess break it off that um relationship after you got better or like a before you got better? I was better. Mm. I really was working on myself. Yeah. And that's when things got really bad is when I started getting better. So, and it was almost like Huh. Yeah. What what made you say, mm, I gotta go to gym? Like is that something you read? I've all, well, no, I've always been an athlete and I've always been in the gym. Yeah. And it was like after I had my second uh, kid, I it took me a little longer to get um, kind of in that healthy mental space again mm -hmm. where it's like take care of yourself, this and that, because there was a lot of postpartum, like that's a real thing. And I was also dealing with, you know, a bad relationship. And so I, it, it registered to me though, that like, I just, I just want to be better. I want to get better, do better in my everyday life and just be more, um, just have a better, um, Thought process, even. Yeah, I so mean, like, I um, had missed it. Yeah, so like, I guess, like, I'm. I was asking because it's like, for me, um, I went to like a dark place. Like, I think four, five years ago, mm -hmm. and then I had like dark thoughts of myself and all that kind of stuff. I look at myself and like, I was like, me, I was like fat, you know. And then uh, I was depressed and I wasn't not doing too much, and then. Um, I was watching YouTube channel, a YouTube video. Like literally, I never watched YouTube video. Mm -hmm. I went to the parking lot and I sit in the truck and I had a, like a worst thoughts possible. I can come to my head. And then some reason I popped in. It's literally, I guess like, you know, the phone can feel or like phone knows or whatever. And then like uh, how to deal with depression, <laughs> the video pop up. And then that was like a guy who is like a fitness influencer talking about how to deal with those stuff. And then I watched, that was like 10 PM at night. And I watched that guy's video till like 3 AM in the parking lot. And then I'm going to gym, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that was for me because of, um, of some influencer. It's not like I saw some, some guy or whatever, or some, uh, you know, girl, or whatever, you know, I was in that re in a relationship at the time, but you know, so uh, that was for me. But I was curious, like, what made you go to gym? I think it was like um, therapy. Mm. Like, I needed something to do other than work and being a mom. Mm. Like, I had lost kind of. I worked remotely. I had two little kids. And I just felt stuck. Like I needed to do something for me, but I needed it to bring results, not just go like get my nails done, right? <laughs> like I needed something more. And I was like, okay, like it's time to get back in the gym. And it was so therapeutic for me. Mm. And I feel like that's what saves me from going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> But you got nails done. I got, I, I, I mean, yes, <laughs> you got nails done. Like I keep up still, but you know, <laughs> so it's like, like a, these grow out and they become gross again. 
I mean, I don't know. Like, can you lift with that thing? Oh, like I can lift with these, but I do CrossFit too. And oh, okay. so if I let them go too long, like yeah. my nails start breaking off at CrossFit, yeah. you'll see like, you know, they'll be like, Hey, your nail fall off, fell off again. <laughs> like, oh, <dang. laughs> uh, is that hurt though? Oh, it hurts. Uh. It's, yeah, it hurts. Why, why, why? I don't understand why do it. Why we get our nails done. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's pretty, I guess. It makes, yeah, <laughs> I think it's just one of those things, being a girl makes you feel good about yourself, yeah. or it's fun to do. Yeah. I don't really know, now that you <laughs> asked me, why, like, who thought to put, like, plastic squares on your fingers and paint them? And that could really boost your confidence. Yeah. I think it's interesting to me, it's kind of like... um I think like engagement ring or whatever, right? Like a diamond ring was like diamond is kind of like uh, not like very like uh, I guess valuable rock or whatever, but like a marketing made it to like uh, cool, right? Yeah. So like in the history yeah. of diamonds, it's pretty brutal. Yeah. But like people spend millions even. Yeah. On this. Exactly, and I was wondering like who started. Like a long nail. <laughs> I don't know. That <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be cool to like look it up. Like uh, the first who did, that, who did that first? Like a nail people. Like, yeah, I actually don't know. I never put too much thought into it until right now. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you had that uh, viral post. Yeah. Uh, the quote I have, I put. Uh, I'll bring it up. As a parent, it's your job to rearrange your life to benefit your children, not the other way. And then that got like 100K share almost. Yeah, it so, was pretty crazy because yeah. it's something that I like share parenting thoughts, mm -hmm. you know, and it was just one day I just posted that. And then I remember looking later on throughout the day and it was like hundreds, hundreds. And then it just grew and I was just kind of like, it's the most to me like simple thought and it's common sense, but it's also very relatable, especially in this day and age. You know, I feel like a lot of, there's a lot of single parents due to that. Yeah. What do you think about like, um, what advice do you have to uh, single parents? Oof. Um, the advice I had to single parents, don't feel guilty. About... You guys are single? About being a single parent. Hmm. It, that's the hardest part is because you're like, you don't want to not give your kids that motherly figure if it's the dad or that fatherly figure if it's the mom, you know, doing it. Do you try to be both? Mm, I don't, oh, I don't know. I might try in some aspects because now I do step in and like have to but i'm also though like a more like i was supposed to be a boy mom like i feel like i was just because i'm you know athletic yeah athletic, and, whatever so yeah. like it that works but yeah. it is hard because they i have a great family which helps you know maybe help you out support. yeah or, and they have great um male role models Right. But like, yeah, you do step in because now it is your responsibility to teach two little boys how to be a man mm. when and that should be the dad's responsibility because they should be role modeling that and like showing them that. To where what do you teach? Just, so how old is your kid? Well, the oldest is almost three. Okay. The youngest is almost two. Okay. So like, how do you teach? three-year-old how to be a man? Mm, I think you just instill like those morals and values every day, like talking right, doing the right thing. I mean, but because I feel like no matter if you're a girl or boy, like you still need to have those morals and values instilled in you to where it just teaches you how to um, talk correctly, how to react correctly, um, 
how to carry yourself because as these the toddler phase, they're absorbing everything they see. Yeah. So if they see something go wrong on my end, and if I react in a um kind of out of character way where I get angry and this and that, they're going to pick up on that. And that's how they're going to react. Yeah. Or how I speak to them. Because sometimes they do things where you're like, what are you doing? You know? And right. so it's just how you approach it. And I think like, especially for little boys and men, they are taught to be like so hard and tough. And like, they can't express real emotion and like, they have to be the man. And that's how you raise your kid too. No, I want to raise them to where just because you're a man, you need to be able to express your feelings and emotions Mm. in the right way. Just how women are allowed to do. Mm. Yeah. I was, I was thinking about that because like, um, last Last month, May is like a mental health month, right? Because yeah. I was kind of making a video about mental health and all that kind of stuff. And then then like also like a lot of podcasts, the guests, like who was like a movie director, who else we had, like a chef or something like that, you know, like a ne- food network or ch- champion or whatever. I saw. And then we talked about like a mental health a lot. But do you think that... What do you, as a female perspective, the guy go to therapy, what do you, what's your thoughts on that? Of a guy going to therapy? Yeah. I think therapy is great for everyone, anyone, um, especially men, because I think a lot of time they could feel like they have to bottle everything up because they need to be the, the strength the yeah. provider, yeah, literally the man of the house, right, and that they're not allowed to feel, express, or not be okay because they need to provide, right, or they have to be tough, or they have to show tough love, or whatever, because it's probably how they were raised or what they saw. But like, I think therapy is very helpful mm. for women and men, but I think it takes a lot more bravery maybe for a man to be like, I'm going to go to therapy. Yeah. You know, then maybe it does for a girl. Yeah, that's true. I think, I mean, I go to therapy. Yeah. Yeah. You got to put that ego aside. Yeah. You know, that masculinity. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like, yeah, like I kind of like, well, I train and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I'm, you know, but like, it's just it's just strong to be be I I was I think like a brain is a muscle you know you gotta train it and they also like I think if you're an actual man that you can express because like a lot of men who are insecure about themselves uh, is that they are bottling bottling up their feelings or bottling up the problems and then they can't speak out because they feel they're weak or something. Yeah. But I think actual men, like my belief is that they can talk about it. They can bring it up, say, hey, this is how I feel and this is how you make me feel or this is how it's going and I don't like that or like whatever, that tough conversation. I think a lot of, uh, I see it from the workplace too, that, you know, when, you know, guys doesn't say anything or something like that it's not really strong but like you have to have a hard conversation yeah. to get what you want and then as a leader of the company i try to have a tough conversation because if you don't nothing gets resolved and then it's just go south yeah and like i think it's funny because women when they speak up, yeah, they can almost be considered a you know what, <laughs> you know, like. But if a man does it, it's yeah. expected. But if a woman does it, then she's targeted as a bitch. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, I've like as working in a management role. I and think, about around all men, yeah. older men, mm-hmm. it was intimidating. Yeah. 
But it was like, what do you do? Right. I'm not going to be quiet. But then if men do become vulnerable. Yeah. As a woman is usually more vulnerable naturally. Yeah. But when a man does it, they could be called weak. Right. And no, no guy wants to be called weak because it triggers that ego. Yeah. I don't that know. There's true. like. This is a balance. But I think a lot of things I've been learning, I guess, in my therapy session is that you can speak out to be a bitch or you can speak out to be a weak person. But I think intention matters and then how you speak, it matters. And then how it's not like if you're like complaining to complain, then it could be that. But like, I think if you have like true intention to resolve the problem and then also like a true intention of the curiosity, say, hey, you say this, this made me feel this way. So is that true? Or like, am I misunderstanding what yeah. you're saying? Like, I think it's just a fine line. I, I do see what you're saying about like, you know, like perception of society is wrong. But also like, I do think that people think that people, some like a girl saying, complaining or some uh, reasoning or whatever. And then some guy look at uh, that uh, female, a bitch. And then that might be, the guy's insecurity rather than yeah. the girl's being a bitch. Right. And yeah. that's the thing. It's like how everyone perceives it. Yeah. It's I don't know, where the messiness I don't know comes everyone, from. But. <laughs> well, everyone like individually, yeah. how each person is going to perceive you stepping into that role. Right. Or letting your voice be heard. It's kind of like you just have to sometimes you, you, usually nine times out of ten, you just do it. Yeah. And like hope for the best. Yeah. Really. I mean, it's in, yeah, it's, it's, I guess it's so hard to be a uh, parent, huh? Like, I mean, I don't have a kids, but. Yeah. Parenting's tough. It's hard work. Yeah. Be, well, I always say it this way. If being a good parent is hard work. Anyone can be a parent, you know, like that doesn't mean doing it the right way is hard work. Mm. Because it takes it takes a lot of thought process and breaking things down and patience. Mm. Because you no longer can just live for yourself. I have to have a plan to have a plan, literally. Like, there's a lot of moving parts that go into being a parent. And when you want to do it the right way, you know, it's hard work. Yeah. You're constantly, you have that subconscious going on all the time because you're having to change how you speak, how you talk or same thing, how you walk your yeah. actions, everything changes. Um, which like they should always change to be better. Yeah. But when you have two little humans you're taking care of and you want to mold them yeah. into being a kind, decent person. Yeah. You have to make a lot of changes. Yeah. Yeah. You have to literally lead by example. As I'm noticing, like my almost three year old will, he will repeat words well, all, like, all the time. Yeah. And so I'm like always trying to watch how I respond to things in my dialogue. Yeah. And let it be like positive. <laughs> Even if something's negative, like try to respond in a more positive way. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. And then also like, I mean, I love that. And then like, um, also you train people in the fitness, right? Yeah. Like, uh, I guess you like to help raise people. I guess you like to help yeah. people. What's your fitness trainer thing, I guess? My thing? Like, what do you do to train people? Like a CrossFit or? Oh, oh, okay. Um, it just depends on the person's goals. Yeah. Um, I'm not a CrossFit trainer yeah. or coach. I go to CrossFit and have yeah. them because it's kind of different. Yeah. But um, I just like to help people like who have a goal to just be better, yeah. whether that's losing weight, building muscle, getting toned, um, or just even understanding how to use equipment. Because some people don't even, they're not confident enough to walk into a gym 
that's why a lot of people don't work out is what I find is because it's intimidating Mm. to go into a place where you see a lot of people knowing how to use this equipment yeah, and they're doing it really well. They look good and you're just getting started. And so a lot of people want that personal trainer just to kind of um, help guide them. Yeah. You know, I remember whenever I came, I went to a first American gym. Um, I was like a skinny little kid, like uh, probably I was like 20 or something, 19 or something. I worked into like a 24 hour fitness uh-huh. on the south side of Oklahoma City. And then I walked in and then like, yeah, a lot of guys wearing tank top, right? And then like, like a big, like also like I'm from Japan. So like, it's not really like I know. Never seen like a big old guy. I mean, I've seen big guys, but like not that kind of big, right? Yeah. So then like I see like people like doing like a dumbbell stuff, like curls, right? Because that's only thing I knew. Yeah. So the guy was like curling like 45. And then I just like lifted up. I was like, all right. I was trying to do it a little bit. And then like, okay, this is too heavy. You're around me. <laughs> and then there was like, um, I... I don't know, this is a, like sex, this is call it, but every gym has a girl corner. Oh, a girl <laughs> corner. <laughs> you, know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about. It's just, So I had to kind of go there to like get like 10 pounds, 20 pounds, like a dumbbells and then like start doing it. And then, you know, I see a little, little result or whatever. I didn't know what to do. And then I went to a YMCA once. And then there is uh, uh, the guy who was like huge and then working out hard and i say hey dude you look great i want to be like you can you kind of tell me what you're doing he's like of course bro and then he just like show me like a bunch of stuff i was like cool so like he's like you're like very motivated huh and i'm like yeah i'm trying to get big like you like literally i told you and then like he's like why don't you come tomorrow this time so I worked out with him for like six months. Wow. Then I had a like a literally had a like a skinny little Asian kid to like uh, the guy has a little muscle, you know. So then after that, I started like researching all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. But I do think the personal trainer helped because that guy, I never paid him, but yeah. I just did what he was doing and every he single saw day. Result. <laughs> yeah. Copy, I mean, copy and paste. I mean, I remember what he was doing now, but I don't do it now, but he was doing like lateral uh, delt raise or whatever. He started from well, 10 pounds. He goes 15, 20, 25 till like go to like 50 and then go back down. Mm-hmm. That's like one workout and then we did like six or seven of those mm-hmm. no wonder i got jack you know on that yeah time. <laughs> yeah the like power sets and stuff yeah yeah i um i knew about working out but like i had to really understand it because mm-hmm. like it's so much more than just going out going to the gym and grabbing some weights yeah you know like I had to really, like you said, research. Yeah. Like I really did my research and grew a lot just by watching things, experimenting, trying things. Yeah. Because there's a method to it all. Yeah, it's crazy to me. Like there is so many resources on the internet. There are. But people just say, oh, like you say too, like, well, I don't know how to use a machine. Like I'm literally, there is a video for everything. You can Google Google it. But you know, whatever. But I mean, um, what do you think about a guy hitting you at the gym? Mm, It depends. Does that work for you? I think I would be okay if they're like a big if they're no if they're not (laughs) weird about it because like some people will just stare and you're like i'm just here to work out yeah because i go to the gym and actually like put in work Mm -hmm. you know like you said the girl corner i don't go to the girl (laughs) corner (laughs) i'm over there like you know really getting after it and so i don't want to be I'm not saying I don't want to be hit on, but like, I don't want it to make me feel uncomfortable. Yeah. 
because I'm kind of in my zone. What, so, is the, what is the best way to... The best way to hit on a girl at the gym, first of all, check her fingers. Make sure she doesn't have a ring on. <laughs> and then... <clears throat> hmm, I guess I would want to be approached in a regular way. Like, like what? Like if you're out. Because it's just... It's a... It's a good setting, I would say, to meet someone because it's positive. You're not at a bar drinking. I think the gym is a much better place to meet someone because it's showing discipline on both ends, which is not a red Same flag. Value. Yeah. Like they're not taking shots. Right. So I would just say to make it casual, like, like a s Sunday stroll in the park. <laughs> like you just, just go up to the person and just be like, hey, I don't want this to come off weird. I know you're in the middle of a workout, but I just want to let you know you're, I've seen you in here a few times and you're really beautiful. Um, I don't want to make you uncomfortable, but would you, you know, mind if I got your number or something like that? Hmm. Makes sense. I don't know. Just some, keep it. What if like a, you're a simple. trainer, right? Do you train guys? Yeah. That does uh, the guy who you're training can't hit on you? Mm, I would not like that. Hmm. If if like for me, if this is like my business and I'm in a business setting. What if they graduate? <laughs> if they graduate, <laughs> they're no longer a client. Yeah. But you see too much. I mean, <laughs> I, I would be open to it because I'm not opposed to like i'm a very open-minded person so i try not to put the weird barrier on things if yeah. i don't need to um but like it would be a little awkward if that's your client yeah. and you're training i haven't had that happen mm. but if you're training them i have i've known someone to where it was inappropriate and they had to just actually let the client go. Mm. You know? You know who you are. You, you know who you are. <laughs> but uh, if you are a client and then wanted to hit on Rachel, just graduate. Get fit first. Get fit first. <laughs> <laughs> Show me that Discipline. you're dedicated. Yeah. But I don't know. I just feel like read the room. Yeah. With anything you do. Mm -hmm. Read the room. Like, it's not that hard to do. Yeah, for but sure. But some people, like, don't know how to do that, and they make things super uncomfortable You know, it's awkward. funny, like, read the room, right? Like, in America, you guys say read the room. <laughs> but in Japan, you say uh, read the air. Mm. It's kind of, I like to read the air better. Because, like, it's yeah. kind of like a... Like an energy. Environment. Yeah, like yeah. an energy, power, like, spiritual thing rather than, like... Yeah. Read the room, like, well, there is, like, table. Like, well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I but know, we I do know. mean it in a more <laughs> spiritual, spiritual way. way. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because everything is spiritual. Yeah. Pretty much. So, I mean, like, uh, I was talking about that, um, you know, five years ago, 2018. What were you doing? <clears throat> I was living, I was living in Vegas. Okay. 2018, I was bartending in Vegas. Mm. I had just finished school, mm. film school. As I NYC film school. Yeah. So I had moved to LA to Vegas and I was 22. Mm. Young, dumb, living in Vegas as a bartender. What advice would you give yourself to <clears throat> young and I'm not going <laughs> to <laughs> Well, maybe not dumb because I wasn't. I was doing good for myself. Yeah. Um, whatever. Um, but the advice I would give myself then, there's a lot. But to sum it up, it would probably be take yourself, put, put yourself first and take yourself serious. Because I was not. And I think that's what got me into a lot of things that probably s slowed me down in my 
development of becoming who I am because I really was not, but one for sure wasn't putting myself first. Mm. It's putting everything else around me first, which I wasn't like, I guess, respect yourself. Mm. No matter what you're doing, respect yourself, you know? And I think that would have helped me make a some better choices. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, what about how do you see how do you see yourself in five years? Mm. In five years, I would like to own and run my own gym. Mm -hmm. And mm, my kids will be older. I see myself running, just building and maybe going that entrepreneur route, what I'm trying to pr getting into. And helping people and giving them resources, like having a platform to where I can help people and give them the resources and um, that <laughs> personable connection on a bigger level mm. than what, because right now that's what I'm trying to build. So in five years, I hope that I'm not dealing with gnats. Yeah. <laughs> So hopefully your gym doesn't have a flies in there. But are you trying to have a gym in the Oklahoma City or like Oklahoma? Or? Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I don't like to say it's hard to speak on long-term things because you don't know where life is going to take you. But I feel like when I'm staying the course I'm in, like that will happen. Yeah. You know, yeah. I can confidently say that. But um, I would like it to be in Oklahoma City. I love, like, I've grown to love Oklahoma City. Mm. I had a love-hate relationship with Oklahoma yeah. for a long time, which is why I left. And yeah. I'm glad I ventured out and experienced, which I still want to experience life and yeah. travel. But right now, Oklahoma's home. And yeah. I'm okay with that. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, um is there anything else that we didn't cover? And then like as a parenting, fitness, news station or whatever you would like to share? Um, I Yeah, I mean, I guess based off of everything we've talked about, like parenting, relationships, work, environments. One, if you're in a position where you're dealing with that trauma after leaving, don't beat yourself up over it. <laughs> Give yourself some grace. Because I did. I was like, afterwards, I was like, why did I stay in such a toxic place for so long? And that can just send you down a dark path. And I take yourself serious and put yourself first, literally. Do that above any, any one. Because I there's a lot of things I could have avoided a lot of pain if I would have done that makes so, sense yeah well how can people find you um Instagram is at Rachel Fry underscore I'm at fit fitness studio so you can go to their website and Facebook they perfect. can find me there perfect uh I will put the Link in the description and then follow the support Rachel. And then uh, thank you guys for watching for this uh, Be Frank podcast episode 34. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, please comment and support Rachel's journey. And then also uh, give us a like and subscribe, all that jazz. And if you're listening to Spotify or iTunes or whatever the podcast streaming you guys are, Give us a uh, five star. I think that helps a little bit on the podcast. I'm not sure, but I think it's helping. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, thank you guys supporting. And then uh, all the encouragement I get and all that kind of stuff makes us do this podcast every week. And then see you guys next Friday. Peace. Thank you so much.